Hey y'all, thank you for joining me for another episode on how do you cook. So today we're going to be making dried pinto beans. So today I have a 16 ounce bag of dried pinto beans and what we're going to do is we're going to open up this package right here and put it in a colander. This is how I do it. This is how my mom showed me how. So what we're going to do is just put those in there and you see those right there in the in the colander so what we're going to do is we're going to pick the beans and check them for rocks or any bad beans that may be in here so put my glasses on and i am going to get started so what i'm going to do is just see i'm see there's a bad bean right there now I wanted to bring you guys over here so you could watch as I pick the beans and see what I'm looking for. So I always go through and get like the little halves. You don't have to, but I always do. I'm going to put that right there. And see, there's my beans right there. And you can probably see beans on top that probably need to be picked out. So you have these little halves that I always try to take out and see that's a bad bean right there that's usually what I try to get out I don't know if you can see that okay so I'm just going to continue to pick the beans <laughs> Okay, so I'm just about finished dry picking the pinto beans, which is I just go in and I try to eyeball which beans might look like they're bad um, or already shriveled up or I always try to get the um, halves out. And sometimes you'll find a rock in them. But see, this is what I'm talking about as far as bad beans. I'm, I hope that this will show up but this is a bad bean right here that you would like to take out oops so i just took that out and i'm just going to go through this one more time to make sure that i got all of the bad beans out this is just dry picking I always go through the dry part first before i even rinse them so what i'm going to do now is I'm going to move my colander over to the sink like so and I am going to turn the water on as I'm picking them so I'm rinsing the beans as I'm picking so this is how I like to do it I like to rinse the beans really good because sometimes there's a lot of grit that's still left on them so while I'm doing this, I'm going through my beans again just to check and make sure that I got all the bad beans. And sometimes you're going to miss some. Like this one right here doesn't look too good. So I'm just going to put that over to the side. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, now that our beans have been dry picked and wet picked, I always rinse them really good and pick them as I am rinsing them. So, I mean, you're not going to be able to get every single bad bean out, but I will show you a little trick of how to find bad beans once you put them in the water. Okay, I'm going to turn this water off. Okay, as you see, they're all picked. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get these ready to put over into my pan. Okay, I want y'all to see the type of beans that I picked from my pintos, just so you'll know about what to look for. I usually get my get the half ones out, and the ones that kind of look just really wrinkly and weird, or like ones that look like this. This is really damaged and okay y'all it's time to add water to our beans but before we do that i am going to open up a ham hock that i have right here i always cook my beans with a ham hock because it just gives it that flavor and um you can actually eat the ham along with it after it's cooked what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to rinse this don't know if you can see that but I'm going to rinse this off really good. Then I'm just going to lay that ham hock right here in the beans. You see that? Alright, you got your ham hock, you got your beans going. Okay, now what we're going to do is add our water. This is a fresh ham hock, too. You can tell it's really pink. Okay. I put about this much water in it just to cover. Try to cover up the ham hock as best you can, but you don't want to overflow your pot either. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over here. Okay. And there you have it. There's the beans on the stove, ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my salt and pepper. Hang on just a second. I like to add a lot of pepper at the beginning. Go ahead and turn the stove on. Usually turn the stove on to high just before it's just so it could get a good boil going. So I'll put about a tablespoon or so of pepper in there. And I'm gonna put a good amount of salt in there. That's probably all the salt I'm gonna add to my beans until I have to add more water. Okay, so I told you I was gonna show you a little trick about beans. So, if, if you think that you're not really sure on whether or not you got all of your beans, the bad beans out, whenever you put your water in your pan, if you have a couple of beans that are floating, like this one, see it's floating on the top, you know that that's a bad bean. So, you just go ahead and take that out of your water, and then you go ahead and take this one out too, because there was two of them that was floating. Now, if it will just come on so I can get it out. There you go. All right, so. So, I think we're good with the beans. We're ready to go, ready to start cooking. We have our salt and pepper added. We'll have our ham hock in there. Now, the ham hock will kind of get covered up as it starts to cook. It'll be really good. Okay, y'all. So, as soon as it starts to boil, I will come back and show you what temperature you need to cook your beans on. Okay, be right back. Okay, y'all, our beans are starting to boil. So, what you're going to want to do now is um, turn your heat down to a medium so a medium on my stove is a five so i'm going to go ahead and turn that down now i 
Okay. Now I turned my pan down um, to a five just to see where that would sustain us because we don't want our beans or juice or any of that boiling over. Okay, I don't think it's going down too quick, so I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more to a medium low. And a medium low on my stove is a number three. And once it starts getting good and cooked or starting to cook really well, then you'll want to turn it down even more. I mean, but you do want to have it to a rolling boil, not too high up. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I always add a top to mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a top and see what happens there. It should cool it down just a little. It actually helps the beans cook a little bit faster. So actually, I think it's still going a little bit too high, so I'm gonna turn down my stove just a little bit more. Because you want them to cook, but you don't want them to roll over onto your stove. Okay, guys, so I'm going to come back and check on my beans and see how they're doing in about, I would say, about 30 minutes. Because beans usually take about three to four hours, really depending on how long um, or how slow you cook your beans. So mine usually cook about three to four hours. Sometimes I let them cook a little bit longer because I like mine. I like to actually have a little bit of juice and soup with my beans so I can dunk my cornbread in there. Okay guys, I'll be right back. Oh hey guys, one thing I forgot to mention is if you do not have a ham hock on hand and you have bacon, you can use bacon to substitute for that. Or you really don't have to have any kind of um, meat to flavor your beans um, if you do not like that type of thing. Um, but if you just have bacon grease, um, you can add that to your beans and cook with that. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can cook your beans. Um, you can use a ham hock, you can use um, bacon grease, and you can and you can use bacon. Um, so if if you know a different way of cooking your beans, share it in the comment section below and let me know how you make yours. Okay, y'all. My beans have been boiling on medium low for about an hour. Oh, goodness, steam. <laughs> okay, so this is what your beans will look like about an hour into it. And you see that the ham hock is cooking well and um, it's providing all that delicious flavor into your beans. So this is what they look like right now. Um, I'm not going to add any more water just yet, but I may need to in about the next 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my lid back on my beans and just let them continue cooking for about another 30 minutes and then check on them again to see if you need any more water. Hey y'all, I told you I'd come back and let you know when, when it's time to add water to our beans. Okay, so you see that they're boiling. I'm going to open up our pan here. And you can see it's kind of getting, there's still water in there, but it still is going to need a little bit more to, um, to cook our beans. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water to our beans, not much, because I don't want to add too much water too quick because there might, there's a point when you're cooking beans when it doesn't absorb the water any longer. Okay, so this is this is what it looks like. I'm not going to add any more salt and pepper right now, but um, I'm going to let this heat up again and start coming back to a boil, and we'll come back when it gets a little bit closer. It's been about uh, 35 minutes since we added more water to our beans, so I'm going to open this up. It looks like it's boiling just a little bit too much. I don't really want it to boil that quick. 
So I'm going to open up my pot and just take a look to see what the beans are doing. Okay, so they look pretty good. Uh, the ham hock looks like it's doing pretty good also. It's actually, it's a really big ham hock, y'all. So I just went ahead and flipped that over so maybe the top part can get some cooking. So I'm not going to add any more water right now, but I am going to um, close the lid. And I'm going to turn this down just a little bit because I don't want it to boil too quick. I'm going to turn it down to about a low, about 1.8. I did have it on 2.6 hey y'all welcome back as you may have noticed i have moved my beans to a different eye because i have started cooking other items for tonight's supper for sunday supper okay so we're going to open up our paint our pot <laughs> okay so i have just been checking on my beans periodically throughout the cooking process just to check out and see if i needed to add any more water but we do not we've only added that little bit of water that we've added earlier and none nothing more so it looks like that our ham hock is really done it's really good looking it's actually starting to tear apart and this is what you want your beans to look like they have that soup in them we'll see i have a bone right here i need to go ahead and take that bone out that fell off the ham hock. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And you can see all that ham is coming apart, which the ham is probably done. You can take the ham hock out if you want before you start st serving, or you can just leave it in. It's your preference. Doesn't matter. Either way is right. It doesn't really matter how you want it to be done. So normally, I try to get all the bones out that have fallen apart into the pan and then normally I just leave my ham hock in there but this is how you want it to look just like this it has that nice soupy creamy creamy soup with it that you that is really good for dipping your cornbread into okay so that's it. You have your pinto beans made with ham hock for Sunday supper. So if you like this recipe, please give it a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more inf informative videos like this. Um, and I thank you so much for watching and tuning in and thank you for your support. So thank you so much. We'll see you later. N until next time. Love you lots. See you later. Bye.